Hello learners, in this tutorial, I'm going to explain you how to read write parquet file using Databricks. In my previous video, I have explained you how to query Azure SQL Server database table using Databricks. So uh, now we will move to the today video. So uh, in this video, we will learn uh, what is parquet file. Secondly, uh, what is the mean by columnar storage? So it is specific to the parquet file. Then advantage of Apache uh, parquet file then difference between CSV and parquet file and uh, we uh, write some data uh, frame as a parquet file then we finally we read uh, parquet file and uh, load it into the data frame so those are the areas we are going to cover in this uh, tutorial then we will go uh, and see what is parquet file so first of all the parquet is the Apache product and um, it has a columnar file format, not like JSON and CSV, and uh, it is more efficient than the CSV and the JSON file. So that is about the parquet uh, file. Then uh, it's supported with many data processing systems. So there are a lot of data processing systems. Mm, majority of the data processing systems are supported with this parquet uh, file. So uh, the third point is compatible with most of the data processing framework is Hadoop ecosystem. So then uh, the last point is uh, the compression choice is the is, it has a advanced advanced compression techniques it reduces data storage by 80 percent it means uh, let's say we have a 10 gb csv file so if we store that same information as a parquet file we can store with 2 gb parquet file it means it reduces data storage by 80 percent so this is the uh, the introductions about the parquet file then we will move to the uh, next section the next section is what is mean by columnar index uh, you can see in the the top table i have uh, created a simple table with three columns and three records you can see id name address are the columns then there are three records id one two three and names and address is there so if you consider about the uh, raw oriented storage you can see the first record one id is one name is pubudu address is sri lanka so likewise uh, as per the call, uh, raw oriented storage, second record we are storing as two, uh, name is Devagama, address is US. Likewise, it will store as a raw oriented storage. Uh, then if we consider the columnar uh, storage, you can see all the ID is stored as a first. So you can see one, two, three has stored. And the secondly, uh, name columns data is stored, then address columns uh, data store. So that is the columnar storage. Uh, behavior so in the parquet file actually that columnar storage technique is uh, available so from that actually the read operations is more powerful than the csv and the json uh, file format so i think you have clear understanding about that columnar storage then we will move and uh, yeah see the advantage of the uh, parquet file so uh, first one is the reduce the storage less space so uh, already i have explained uh, in the previous slide so it's reduced the storage then the second point is high query performance reduce the io operations uh, obviously uh, the read operation is uh, very efficient than other file formats then the fetch specific column that you need to access so that is the another advantage of the apache packet file then automatically capture the schema of the original data automatically we can capture that information so that uh, that is about the advantages then we will move to the difference between csv and the parquet file so i have listed down few uh, differences of the csv and the uh, between csv and the parquet file you can see first one is compressible uh, there is in the csv uh, there is no any compression mechanism but in the parquet file we have that compression mechanism then columnar index is not there storage is not with the csv file but in the parquet file we have so splitable is a feature is available both CSV and the uh, parquet format. So that is the uh, good uh, uh, it is a advantage of both formats. Then human readable. So CSV, you know, uh, easily we can read the contents of that CSV file, but uh, the parquet file, that data we can't read. It's a uh, something like uh, binaries okay so default schema is uh, manual and in the packet file the default schema is automatic then use case basically uh, csv uh, more uh, uh, used for data writing 
yeah, the performance is very high for the data writing with the CSV, but uh, packet file is uh, uh, mostly we are using for the reading. So basically we are uh, for the retrieval purposes, we are using packet file. So with the Delta Lake, data lake concepts, we are using that packet file. So easily we can read that existing data uh, from the uh, data, lake, data lake or whatever the story. So that is the difference between CSC and the packet file. Uh, so I think uh, now you have basic understanding about the uh, packet file. So now we will see how to uh, uh, read and write uh, data, uh, packet file, read and write data uh, using packet file format using uh, Databricks. Then I will move to the uh, Databricks Community Edition uh, environment. Okay, uh, now I have connect to the uh, Databricks Community Edition. So in my previous video, I have uh, explained you how to query uh, Azure SQL Server database using Databricks by Spark. So same example I have used uh, for that uh, packet example. Uh, so I uh, connect to that uh, database using JDBC connection and get some information and that information I am going to uh, write as a packet file that uh, again at the end I will read that packet file. So that is the flow of that tutorial. So uh, now uh, I have to give that uh, uh, JDBC connection details. First of all, we have to get that JDBC host name. So I can go to that uh, uh, Azure SQL Server database and you have to copy that uh, server name. So click on that. Then you have to come here and you have to paste that information. So this is the server name. Uh, then we have to get the uh, JDBC database. So database is data cafe uh, DB. So I will type that information here data cafe db then the port is uh, 1433 it is the uh, default port so uh, then jdbc url uh, we have to create so under you are after url we have to create the connection properties so basically we have to give the user and the password so my user is uh, data cafe admin so that is my user the password is uh, admin 123 so uh, normally in, in in production environment we are not uh, hard coded that username and the password we are simply uh, store in uh, Azure uh, wallet or in, in, or in the secret scope so uh, in the next video uh, so I will show you how to create that operations for the time being I will hard code this username and the password so I think uh, we have given relevant information to create the JDBC connection and my the notepad file is uh, attached with the cluster so I will uh, click on this uh, run cell button to create that connection uh, JDBC connection so you can see my uh, connection is created then uh, actually uh, in this database uh, we have a, a table called uh, customer table so directly uh, I will uh, going to uh, query this table by executing this query so already I have typed that command uh, the select query in the notepad so simply I will uh, copy and paste that uh, select query to my notepad okay then I will copy from there and paste that information so you can see I uh, select all from sales lt dot custom I think one bracket is missing so uh, I will include in this way. So uh, uh, simply we will select all the information on the customer table and uh, assign to the customer query. Okay. So that customer query we are passing to that uh, uh, Spark read JDBC uh, method and JDBC URL we are taking from the from this one and the table uh, for the table we are passing that customer query and connection properties also passing with this parameter. So likewise, we can get that all the informations of the customer's table into the DF data frame. So now we will see how to uh, get that information. So simply, uh, you can see we have uh, uh, take that customer data into the DF. So if you want, you can get the record count by executing this command DF dot count. So simply I will execute that again 
then you can see yeah, there are 847 records available in this customer table and it has a link uh, it has loaded to the DF uh, data frame or else if you want to see that data simply you can execute I will keep that line and comment then you can type display df like this then execute then it will display first thousand records i think all the records will display because we have uh, 847 records in the table so it's fetching the result so you can see uh, all the record has fetched here you can see that record code. So uh, we have taken some sample data into the data frame. Now we will see how to write that data into the parquet file. Okay. So uh, for that actually uh, we have to uh, uh, give uh, this command. So df dot write. We have to include the mod and we have to give the uh, parquet file name. Okay. So uh, basically we can. Uh, uh, give the mod uh, we can give uh, overwrite or append for the mod so if you want to override that existing packet file you can give that override if you want to append that uh, file then we can put the append so basically i will give the uh, overwrite overwrite then uh, you have to uh, give the packet file name and the path for that actually we have to uh, get the uh, dbfs uh, file structure path so uh, simply you have to give uh, root the first folder is files store then after that uh, you have to create you have to go to the tables folder then uh, we have to give a parquet store and then you have to give the packet file name so uh, let's say uh, customer dot uh, packet so that is my file so now uh, i will going to i'm going to execute this one then as a override mode my file uh, right under this location as customer dot packet so i will execute this one Now you can see uh, it has uh, executed successfully. Then uh, if you want to see that data, see that packet file, then simply you have to uh, display that uh, uh, file structure. Okay. For that you can uh, execute this command display dbutils fs.ls. So basically uh, we have uh, write, uh, we have written that uh, uh, packet file in this location. So you have to give that correct path like this then it will display the available file so simply i will execute this one now you can see in these locations i have created the packet file called customer dot packet so you can see dbfs file store tables packet store and customer packet so this is the method to write your data as a packet format so in here actually i have used uh, dbfs file structure if you want you can write in a different data lake or whatever the uh, storage you can use to write that information so i think uh, now we know how to write our data as a packet format then we will see how to uh, read our packet file so uh, that is very simple uh, simply we have to uh, give the packet file name so for that basically you have to give that path okay so i will simply copy this information here it's not copying anyway i will type that one so uh, or else you can copy from here copy and paste that information okay now you can see uh, we are going to uh, read earlier created packet file so i will execute this I will run this uh, command so you can see successfully it has executed then if you want to display my packet files data then you have to uh, execute display 
pa df this is my data frame name so simply i will uh, run this cell then you can see uh, it is uh, executing it's read that customer.parquet file it's fetching the result now you can see there are 847 records so if you go to there you can see uh, once we uh, read uh, uh, write uh, read that uh, sql server customer table data there are 847 records the same uh, record count is available in this packet file so i think uh, you have a clear understanding about what is packet file and the advantages and the main features and difference between csv file at the end we will discuss how to read and write packet file so uh, if you have any questions you can put on the comment sections and you can share uh, with this uh, yeah we can share this video with your friends then thank you and we will meet uh, on the next video tutorial